My name is Anne-Claire Leroux and I was surfacing supervisor on Spongebob. Ready! What is very challenging when you try to adapt a very stylized, cartooning, uh, 2D hand-drawn TV show into 3D is that when you're working in 2D, you can do pretty much anything that you want. You are not bound by any law of physics. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you're working in a 3D uh, environment, you are by definition into a physical world. What? For example, you have issues like where do I put my camera so that I can see my entire set or which lens do I use so that my character is not too deformed? So this is always a challenge when working in 3D. They deform in every possible direction, in every possible way. So we needed to make sure that SpongeBob, for example, uh, was able to deform himself without looking broken. Comment on allait permettre de prendre un personnage tel que Bob? de lui rajouter des yeux à la volée, de lui changer la forme complètement à la volée, et que ça se passe toujours bien à l'écran. Et ça, sans créer trop de travail à droite à gauche sur les autres départements. Also, SpongeBob is very iconic because of the very clear poses that the characters take, and they need to be readable in every camera angle, which is also a challenge in 3D. On a mis en place une certaine charte sur les personnages, comment traiter les personnages. Et du coup, c'était, on les a juste aidés à, bah, à comprendre un peu la charte qu'on avait mis en place. Les équipes de texturing, surfacing, le DMP, ils ont fait un vrai travail d'intégration d'éléments 2D au sein des, de tous les props, de tous les personnages. So the textures needed to be able to follow those deformations. And also, we probably wanted him to have those extreme poses, which meant that every part of his body needed to be able to move the way the animators wanted them to move. What we did is that we actually separated all of his body parts from his square sponge body. So his lips, his eyelids, his nose, his arms, his legs, every piece of him was actually separated object. And our job was to make sure that nobody could actually see that. Et au rendu, on a un shader qui finit de faire le travail et qui donne l'impression que tout est qu'une seule pièce même si ça glisse à la surface. On a la chance à Micros d'avoir une équipe en R&D côté lighting chez Marcel Reinhardt et Laurent Clavier qui sont quand même assez talentueux et qui nous ont énormément aidé sur ces challenges de shading. Trying to bring these characters in 3D was a really interesting process because we lied to you, all of you, at the same time because he's a 3D character, he's a, he's a sponge, he's a box, he's a, he's a square, like a cube, right? But like the camera will tell you if it's like a real cube, right? So like this, if you look at it from the top, a cube is square, but for SpongeBob himself, we had to kind of get him at an angle, but sometimes the side of his sponge was not really satisfying, you know, in terms of a design and we, we, it wasn't looking like him anymore. So we had to kind of sculpt every three quarter pose or every pose uh, of the show to make sure that we could kind of pull in that side So if you look at it from the top, it's no longer a 90 degree angle. You're actually looking at it and it's a 40, uh, it's past uh, 90 degrees, like 120, 130, 140, whatever, just so that we can kind of like the camera will make it feel like he's a three dimensional character. Really, Patrick? Last but not least, um, SpongeBob has 28 holes on his body. Well, And that was also a technical challenge because we wanted to make sure that we were able to move them, scale them, or even make them disappear, each of them separately, depending on the shots. And that goes with every character. We had Plankton, who was just a giant tic-tac with the mouth, and so we had to move his eyes around on his body so that we can put him in 3D, but also take his limbs and slide him around so that, like, if you take a character and do like this while the back arm's hiding, So we needed to bring the arm forward to make sure that it still kind of looked like a drawing. So the key was to kind of try to get these characters to look like they were hand drawn inside Maya. Aww. Gary, he was just a weird little slimy kind of blob with his shell and two stocky eyes. So we were trying to figure out how to build him technically. But then we needed to make sure that we also kept a lot of his integrity by those giant eyes that he has. Uh, you know, we use those uh, to, to, to show up a lot of... Uh, expressions and, and feelings and, and to really make the audience wow. feel bad for him. It was it was an interesting challenge because, you know, he is a slug and 
technically speaking, like his body was his mouth. So we had to make a mouth out of a body, but also not put it in from time to time because he wasn't talking or meowing. So we had to figure out a way to kind of like, you know, when he's eating something, how to like build a mouth on him that would actually fit the slug. And so it was a lot of back and forth. Like we were stitching some extra pieces of geometry on him to make sure that we could keep him alive and happy and uh yeah it was he was a challenging character to work with le, le film il est bourré de de petites pépites à droite à gauche en termes de pose en termes de, de situation il y a vraiment vraiment beaucoup beaucoup de choses les animateurs ils sont c'est vraiment c'est vraiment un film où les animateurs sont, ont pu se faire plaisir euh, sur plein de trucs quoi et c'est ça se voit quoi one of my favorite kid shots is when uh, SpongeBob and Sandy are talking. SpongeBob punches Sandy on the shoulder. She's just, Bruh. and then Sandy's laughing, and then she, she punches back Bob, and then so Bob punches her, and then he she, she punches Bob, and then he punches her, and then she smacks him in the face, like in it, because he's a sponge. She could just drive her fist right through the kid's face, and then he she pulls her fist out, and then the tongue's out, and then he comes back, and his face all put together. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> J'espère que ce film plaira aux, aux fans. C'est un peu pour eux qu'on a fait le film. Euh, c'est en pensant à eux qu'on a fait le film, en tout cas. Et euh, j'espère vraiment que ça leur plaira, parce qu'on a vraiment essayé d'être le plus respectueux de l'œuvre. Euh, c'est quand même un sacré dessin animé. Et c'est quand même toujours quoi, une adaptation en 3D. C'est rien d'évident de bien faire ça. Et j'espère ouais, qu'ils qu apprécieront, autant que nous, on a apprécié le faire. 